Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for attending our presentation. Before we hear from our guest speaker, Professor Paul Johnson, it is tradition for the university to acknowledge that it is situated on Noongar land and that the Noongar people remain the spiritual and cultural custodians of their land and continue to practice their values, languages, beliefs and knowledge. Professor Paul Johnson is the Vice-Chancellor here at UWA. Prior to his appointment in 2012, Professor Johnson served as Vice-Chancellor of La Trobe University in Victoria for four years. Before moving to Australia, Professor Johnson served three years as Deputy Director at the London School of Economics. The transformative powers of education underpin Professor Johnson's philosophy as Vice-Chancellor, and he is especially passionate about broadening the access of education for disadvantaged students. Professor Johnson grew up in Bath in southwest England. Higher education was not on the horizon for him, but his grandma was insistent that he attend university, which he did, becoming the first in his family to do so. Professor Johnson studied modern history and economics at the University of Oxford, got his doctor doctorate, and then joined the London School of Economics as lecturer in 1984, becoming direct deputy director in 2004. Over an impressive career spanning 30 years, Professor Johnson has published and edited numerous books, has been an advisor to the World Bank, the British government, and the United Nations Research Institute for Social Development. As Vice-Chancellor at UWA, Professor Johnson is dedicated to building on the reputation for international excellence and has, that has been developed over time. With a focus on the education and extracurricular experience available to students at UWA, Professor Johnson is leading university in its endeavours to graduate world-class students ready for the challenges of the future. Please join me in welcoming our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Paul Johnson. Thanks very much, Susanna, and uh, welcome to everyone to the UWA Open Day. Can I just do a bit of a straw poll? If you're a prospective student thinking about studying here next year or some other point in the future, could you just raise your hand? Okay, one or two there. Others thinking about the university, not too sure um, what you will be doing. Well, I want to talk today a little bit about a journey. And I want to talk about a journey which I was watching last night at my daughter's school they do an annual musical production and this year it was the wizard of oz and i went along to see the wizard of oz last night at methodist ladies college and i thought that journey of traveling down the yellow brick road is just the sort of journey in a sense that i've experienced that this university has experienced and and that students here future students will experience you remember in The Wizard of Oz that um, the journey is, in, is a quest. It's really a moral tale. There's the scarecrow who is trying to find a brain, and the tin man who doesn't have a heart, and the lion who lacks courage. And through the story of The Wizard of Oz, they all find that actually within them they have that capability. The scarecrow is quite smart and has a brain. The tin man really has a heart, and the lion is very courageous, and they find those strengths within themselves. They all go on a journey of transformation. Universities are all about transformation, and it's my goal for every student who comes to this university that they are transformed, not just intellectually, not just in terms of what they know about their subject area, but transformed as a person, as a human being, by their time here, so that when they leave the university, they are a fundamentally different person to the person who came in. Fundamentally different because they have an even better brain, an even bigger heart, they're even more courageous than they were when they started. Let me tell you a little bit about my personal journey as Susanna said, I, was, uh, I grew up in the, what was at the time a very, very sleepy, almost a retirement town in England called Bath. Uh, no, no experience of university. In fact, there was no university in Bath until 1966. I was 10 years old. The university came to Bath. My parents thought it was dreadful because it brought a whole load of long-haired hippies into the town. 
um, a town where the average age of the population was about 60. So this was a, this was a, a big challenge. My parents, my mum left school at 14, my dad at 15. I had no knowledge of what university was, typical of most people in my generation. And I uh, depended a lot, I suppose. I drew a lot on my school teachers, and I went to a school. I guess my parents believed in education without having experienced much themselves. Uh, but they believed in education. They encouraged me to work hard, go to a good school. And there, some of the teachers said, you're a smart boy. If you work hard, you ought to be able to go to university. And they helped me work hard. They helped me set some personal goals and helped me work towards those goals. And that set me on a path to university. And I got a place to Oxford University, and I spent a number of years there studying at different levels. Well, that journey for me was enormously important. Help, the help I got at school, and then the journey through my studies at university, because what I found was that there was a whole world, an intellectual and a social and a personal world, which, of which I had no idea. University for me opened up insights into these other worlds, which from my background uh, in the small town of Bath and from my, my family circumstances, I had never seen before. So university, by opening my eyes, by challenging me, uh, allowed me to transform myself and set me on a journey, a journey of transformation, which uh, ultimately has allowed me to, I suppose, transform myself in many ways, including transforming myself from being a, a, a citizen of the United Kingdom to a citizen of Australia. And I'm very proud that I've been able to, um, a couple of years ago, take out citizenship here. And... Uh, uh, with my wife and family, um, uh, build our life here. Uh, but the transformation has been in, in many different areas for me, uh, socially, economically, uh, in terms of citizenship, in terms of my worldview and the development of a personal set of values. That wouldn't have happened without me walking down my own yellow brick road where university was a very, very big part and, of course, continues to be a very big part of it here at the University of Western Australia. This university has also been on a journey, a journey over the last 100 years. None of you today here at the UWA Open Day can fail to be aware of the fact that this is the university's centenary year. We're celebrating our 100th birthday. So this has been 100 years of walking down a yellow brick road in a quest for uh, knowledge and a quest also for transformation. When UWA was set up, when the first students came here in 1913, the university had a particular mission. The founding fathers of the university made it very clear that this was to be a useful university. In fact, in the piece of legislation that, was, that established the university, it set out very clearly, the university purpose is to advance the welfare and prosperity of the people. This was not to be an ivory tower university, not to be a self-centered university, but to be a university that is an active university and that acts not just for itself, not just for people within the university, but for the whole of society. If you think back 100 years, 1913, Western Australia was a very small state in terms of population. And it was just coming out of a minerals boom. At the time, it was the, the gold rush. The gold rushes, the Kalgoorlie and Coolgardie gold rushes of the 1890s were tailing off just before the First World War. But it was still a very prosperous part of Australia. And the leading citizens at the time decided that this fledgling state needed a university. Why? Because they knew that it wasn't enough just to rely on what the land could produce, the agricultural resources and the mineral resources of Western Australia. For this state to prosper, it needed brains. So it was a bit like, uh, a bit like the scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz, thinking, I need a brain, I don't have a brain. Well, the leading citizens who certainly had brains back in 1913 said, OK, what we can do is create brain power here by endowing a university ensuring that the smartest 
young people of the state can come and study at this university, that they can learn new things, develop their own capabilities, and then give back through their work, through their endeavor, to the society that we're building. That was a goal 100 years ago. Uh, ago. It's still the goal of this university. It's still our goal to welcome the very brightest young people of the state, and indeed now from other places around Australia and around the world, to welcome them into the university, to give them opportunities to develop their, their personality, to develop their intellectual capability, and then to go out, to go out into the wider world, into the world of work, into the world of business and government and not-for-profit organisations, into social life as well, and give back through their capability, through all that they have learnt. And the university, as an institution, has been aiming to do that for the last 100 years. It's grown from having just fewer than 200 students starting in 1913 to 25,000 students today. And this is now one of the biggest enterprises in Perth. Next year, the financial turnover of the university is going to be a billion dollars. There are 4,000 staff here, 25,000 students. And so we have both a tremendous opportunity and a great obligation to make sure we use all that we have, all those resources, to put back, to give something for the state. What are we trying to do? Well, in part, we're trying to make sure that the minds, the, the brilliant minds that we have here in this university, uh, focus their efforts on intellectual developments that ultimately will have a broad benefit in society. Last year, this university was evaluated as being one of the world's top 100 research universities, one of the 100 best universities in the world, and there are many tens of thousands of universities around the world. We're very proud of that achievement, but it's not my achievement. It's the achievement of the many, many researchers we have here who undertake remarkable work. Remarkable work in medical research, in engineering, in science, in agriculture, in the humanities, in business, in architecture, in art, in music, across these many fields. We are very much at the forefront of intellectual endeavor, of research, of generating new knowledge. But it's new knowledge that has to be useful, effective knowledge. Otherwise, there's no point in generating it. So as a university, we're very much focused on creating opportunity, creating a great deal of uh, life and, and work here in Western Australia, making sure that we also contribute to the, a more general endeavor in human society to progress. So within the university, we are always to some extent dissatisfied. Why are we dissatisfied? We're dissatisfied because we know that tomorrow can always be better than today. It can be better because if we continue to follow the university's motto, which is seek wisdom, and if we pursue that search for wisdom, then we will improve circumstances. We will have a better economy. We will have healthier lives. We will have a more productive agricultural system. We will have a safer uh, environment. Uh, we will have uh, a better functioning society. We will have richer lives. So those are the desires, the goals of the university. And these are general goals that are also focused around transforming the society in which we live, uh, making sure that that society is smarter, that it is a caring society, uh, and that it is a purposeful society. The brain, the heart, the courage. So that was a little bit about my journey, a little bit about the goals of the university. But of course, this university, and for 25,000 people in this university, the students, it's all about their personal journey, their personal journey of achievement and transformation. Now, we set high standards for ourselves in the university, and we set high standards for students. And those of you who are, who are uh, have spent time looking at the university's admissions processes will know that we uh, have some very clear uh, academic standards that we set for admission. We also set high standards for students within the university. 
We want every student to be setting their own goals, to be aspiring to do a little bit more, to, do, to set those goals a little bit higher. We don't want anyone just to be coasting along when they study here at the University of Western Australia. We want students to go out and seek wisdom. This university is not here to provide answers. It's here to generate more sophisticated and more complex questions and to help students identify smart questions from silly questions. Um, the world of e education, particularly higher education, has changed enormously over the last decade or so. Um, back in the, at the turn of the century, back in around the year 2000, if you wanted to get information on something, if you wanted to study something, you had to find access to a major library. Resources were locked away in libraries. Now all you have to do is click the Google button on your computer and you can find out something about anything. So there has been a, a huge democratization of knowledge and access to knowledge. And, and of course, if you Google any subject, you will find in this vast amount of information that comes forward a few gems and a lot of rubbish. What we want to make sure is that our students here always know what the gems are and what the rubbish is and that they can sift and, and sort for themselves. And then, having found out those gems of information, then work with colleagues in the university, with fellow students and with the fantastic academic staff here, to think about the information that they have uh, accumulated from textbooks, from lectures, from laboratory experiments, and indeed uh, from the web, to think about that. And then, from thinking, to go on to uh, question the meaning of that information. Uh, there is, too, in a sense, there's too much information in the world, uh, perhaps not enough knowledge related to that information, and certainly not enough wisdom. So we want to take students on a journey uh, from uh, the information through knowledge and understanding towards wisdom. I say towards, not to, because we never quite get there. Wisdom is always elusive. It is always over the next horizon. But if we can recognize that it is over the next horizon, if we can move towards it, then we will do a great deal for ourselves uh, and for society more generally. Uh, you, uh, I think, will be aware that this university introduced uh, a radical curriculum change a couple of years ago and is now um, distinct from other universities in that instead of offering a very large number of separate degree programs, uh, we have a very small number of degree programs. You can enter this university to study arts or science or commerce or design and a very small group of students uh, entering an elite BPhil program. But within each of these degree programs, there are now many, many choices. Let me explain to you why we've taken the decision to fundamentally change a curriculum. As I said, we want students to seek wisdom. And wisdom is, to some extent, open-ended. And therefore, we want students to come to university not to close their mind down, but to open it up. And we think it is just wrong to have students in years 10 and 11 in high school taking decisions about course choices which narrow their options down and then at the age of 17 plumping for a degree program often in a subject area of which they have almost no knowledge or experience because it's not something they could study at school. A subject for instance um, uh, like uh, archaeology or a subject like medicine generally not available. Uh, at school level, at least not in any depth. So what we've done is say, come to us, get some very good results. We don't really, we're not so interested in the subject choices you've made at high school. What we want to know is that you are committed to study and that you set high goals for yourself. Come here, take an arts or a science or commerce degree, enroll for that, then do a little bit of experimentation. Try out some things that you've never had a chance to try before. And maybe you will find you've never studied archaeology before, but archaeology is a subject for you. Um, and through the process of choice across the first year of university study and well into the second year, 
we encourage students to try a great deal of different subject areas, a number of different disciplines, to seek wisdom, to develop their own sense of intellectual inquiry, and then to pursue that. So that's why we've established the new curriculum structure here. Uh, it's to provide choice. Uh, it's to help students, each student, on her or his individual intellectual journey. So here at the university, we want students to find their brain or develop their brain like, like the scarecrow um, uh, and to do that through our curriculum structure. However, if all this university did was to produce graduates who are better trained in their chosen subject area or areas than they were when they started university, we would have fundamentally failed in our task, in our responsibility of helping students develop themselves. As I said uh, a little while ago, it's my goal that every student is transformed by their own personal journey uh, here at the University of Western Australia. So we emphasize not just academic achievement and intellectual prowess, but we emphasize two other things too. We emphasize values. We try to train, educate, and support the people who will be the next generation of leaders in society. And I don't think anyone can be a good leader if they don't have a clear sense of their own moral compass, of where they want to go, where they draw the line between good actions and bad actions. And so we encourage students to take responsibility for themselves and their own actions and their own values, to support their mates, their fellow students whilst they're here, and to think about other people. Universities are incredibly privileged places. Anyone in a university working here or studying here is very lucky. We're very lucky uh, because we're surrounded by other like-minded people. We're supported by the institution. We're supported by a lot of taxpayers' money. And we have an obligation not just to look after ourselves, but to do things for other people. So I'm very, very keen on supporting action that isn't just self-centered action, but other regarding action. The Student Guild here at the university is very active in encouraging students to undertake volunteering activities through the volunteering hub. And in fact, now we have introduced in our academic programs a number of, a number of subjects or units, which we call service learning, where in combination with academic study, students can undertake work with external organizations which on, about which they have to write and think and research and reflect. And this leads them uh, to uh, gain credit for their study, but it is also a direct um, uh, relationship with a whole range of uh, external bodies. We do, we've always done this, actually, for, for quite a long time in the medical faculty, because our fifth-year medical students spend a year in clinical practice, and many of them spend that year in clinical practice in remote and regional areas. On Monday uh, uh, of this week, uh, the week just gone, I was in Derby visiting um, part of our rural clinical school. You may not know it, but uh, the University of Western Australia has um, parts of its medical faculty, the rural clinical school, spread right across the state. We have students from the very north, from Kununara, down to Albany, from the west in Geraldton, out to Kalgoorlie, in parts of our rural clinical school. And so I was talking to some students up in Derby who are um, fifth-year clinical students, so they're junior doctors, and they are undertaking work with the Derby Aboriginal Health Service. And they are, as part of their academic training, giving back to the community uh, through their work there. And they have all found it an enormously... Um, an enormously um, challenging, personally challenging and personally rewarding experience, as well as being uh, um, a great uh, opportunity to develop their skills as junior doctors. So we're very focused on values, um, and that's why I want every student who graduates from this university not just to have a brain, 
but also to have a heart. And then something else I want students who graduate from this university to have is courage. It's the courage to do things, not just to sit by the wayside, but to have sufficient self-confidence, self-confidence without arrogance, the self, but to have sufficient self-confidence to go out and use their skills, their capabilities in the world of work, in society, in the communities in which they're based, always to think about what more can they do. And that's not a kind of just a warm sort of fuzzy feeling because I would expect UWA graduates to succeed in their chosen field. I expect them to go out and get very good jobs. Indeed, we know that our graduates have, here at this university, graduates have one of the highest rates of graduate employment in, of graduates uh, from any university in the country, and indeed getting very good jobs. And then they go on to stellar careers and graduates from this university. You will find spread across every major sector in the Perth economy, in medicine, in law, in government, in public service, in mining, in banking, in finance, you will find many of the senior people in Perth uh, are graduates of this university, and not just in Perth, but in other parts of the country. But what I want, as our graduates go out to achieve in their own careers, I want them always to remember that as you climb up that hierarchy, as you, as you work your way up through any particular chosen occupation, far and away the best way to do it is not by trampling other people underfoot, but by holding out your hand and taking other people with you. And you need courage sometimes to do that. You need courage also to be clear about your values and about when you say to others who you might be working with, no, sorry, I don't think that's the right thing to do. It would have been good if at some points during the global financial crisis, some people in banks had said to their colleagues, no, I don't think that's the right thing to do. You know, we cannot, we cannot forego each one of us some of the responsibilities we have to set standards for ourselves and try to influence those around us also to set high standards. So that's why I thought watching The Wizard of Oz in a fantastic production at Methodist Ladies College last night was for me quite inspirational because it reminded me of my journey down the yellow brick road, this university's journey, and my aspirations for every student who studies here, for them to be clear that they can develop their brain, they can develop their heart, they can develop their courage, and become the fully rounded student, the fully rounded graduate, that transformational graduate that we hope we will always be producing here at the University of Western Australia. Thanks very much for listening. That's enough from me, but we've got some time for any questions or discussion, uh, if anyone would like it. Thank you. But unfortunately, we don't have a microphone, I think. So if anyone has a question, if you'd like to raise your hand and speak loudly. So, yes. Um, all philosophy is evolutionary, uh, so I'm not quite sure how, I, uh, how to interpret your, uh, your question. Uh, I think uh, all peop there are many ways of developing systems, systems of values, uh, moral values. Uh, some people, of course, um, draw upon religious foundations, others don't. Most, most philosophies of values, whether religious or not, have underpinning them some reference to the golden rule of um, uh, making sure that you treat others as you would be uh, treated uh, yourself. And you know that, that, that seems to me to be a, a very good principle. It's a prudential principle, if you trace it back through, through Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy, it's a prudential principle. So you might say it's an insurance or a risk-averse principle. Uh, but actually, it's a very effective one if you apply it actively. Anyone else? In which case, 
Thanks very much for uh, coming along. I hope it's still a lovely sunny day outside. Uh, there's a lot happening on campus, so let me encourage you to go and find your way around campus, uh, see some of the wonderful um, uh, exhibits that are being put on across the various faculties, uh, and there are lots and lots of people uh, out, out there on the campus uh, uh, to answer any specific questions you may have. So thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the day.